Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm giving a first impressions review and demonstration of the Sonia G Fusion Series brush set. These are five brushes with natural and synthetic fibers made for liquid and cream complexion products. This is a first for Sonia G. She normally has fully natural hair brushes, so I'm very excited to try these out with you. Uh, just a little bit about this collection. These have synthetic and Sokoho goat hair fibers in these brushes, and you can buy them individually or as a set. I did buy the set because five minutes after the launch, individual brush brushes were quickly selling out and currently all brushes are sold out. Hopefully this video will help inform you for future purchases when these brushes are restocked at Beautylish. I think it's important to note that I have always struggled with foundation and complexion products when applying them with a brush. I mostly use a damp sponge to apply those products because my skin just doesn't like brushes. So I'm hoping that these brushes really help out my complexion and give me a smooth finish. I want everything to be easy, carefree, and I don't have to think about it. So that's kind of the mindset I'm coming from. So let me tell you a little bit about this brush collection. This is the Fusion series. That means it's a combination of natural and synthetic bristles. The entire set is $225. Everything's currently sold out, but I'm sure there'll be restocks in the future. So the mixture of bristles is synthetic and Sokoho goat hair. Each of these brushes is handmade in Japan. The handles are made from maple wood and coated with four layers of pigment and lacquer. I would say overall these brushes are a little bit mm, smaller than I expected when they arrived, but I think they're gonna work. <laughs> You know, you might be used to a big foundation brush, but these are good size, I think. Just to compare, I have the Wayne Goss number 13 that I use for liquid foundation products. And this one isn't terribly large, it's like in between the, the Jumbo and Classic base, but a little bit wider and rounder than this one, for sure. The Jumbo base. This is $68 individually, it is made for fast, flawless foundation and just a few swipes. Okay, that's a big promise. It's a swipe and go brush for fast foundation application. It's large but slanted shape helps maneuver around the eyes and nose. It's like slightly slanted. So the slant is like this. So probably a different shape than you're used to for most foundation brushes. The classic base is $55. This is also for cream and liquid foundation. The fluffy airy brush picks up and disperses product across the skin without streaks or emphasizing pores and texture. Okay, so a little bit different. This one you can move around a little bit more. This one's a bit stiffer, but this one more movement. The flexibility and airiness are great for applying cream blush because it won't disturb the foundation underneath. Good to know. So a little bit more flexibility, uh, designed a little bit differently. The mini base, similar shape to the classic but smaller. Still, I think this one has even more give and flexibility with the bristles. And I believe these are the same length. This is $40, small complexion brush for applying foundation, concealer, blush, and more. It was designed to buff cream and liquid formulations into skin with diffused, perfectly blended results. You can use it to apply concealer to larger areas of the face to create a seamless wash of color and cream blush on cheeks. You can use this for foundation, concealer, blush, it's just more detailed, a little bit smaller. Very cool. Jumbo concealer. This is $30 and this is a concealer brush for precise application of creams and liquids. This one feels more dense and stiff. It's a pinched ferrule. See that right here. 
and this is to bring out the best in cream products with stiffer textures, building coverage exactly where you want it. Offers precision and less movement in the bristles to make it easier to work with harder creams. You can use the sides or tip of the brush depending on your needs. You can use this to blend concealer, eye primer, and more with circular buffing motions. Can be used with creams, liquids, and powders. Okay, I could see this using this one to put on an eye primer. Um, I don't really have concealers that are harder that I use, but if you had like a cream concealer that is similar to like um, the NARS soft concealer I think is like in a pot. You might want to use this brush for something like that. Alright and last brush we have is the soft concealer. This one is $32 and this one is more flexible than the jumbo concealer. This is to blend your concealer to seamless second skin perfection with this handcrafted brush. It's designed for cream and liquid formulas. It's fluffy, flexible, with a smaller size that's ideal for, bu for building coverage in hard to reach areas like under the eyes or around the nose. Oh, nice. This Use the soft concealer to blend concealer, eye primer, and more with circular buffing motions. Can be used with creams, liquids, and powders. I can even see using this in your eye area, so maybe some like large wash of color you have liquids. So what I notice about the directions and how to use these brushes, all of these brushes she's suggesting to use like small circular buffing motions, which I find interesting. I know some people like to stipple um, or, you know, if you get around the eye area, you might want to swipe, but she's saying to do this, which is good to know that that's how they're supposed to be used. I know everyone wants to use a brush in their own way. You might be curious about how these feel. I think I'm, I pointed out like which ones are more flexible and which ones are more stiff. They all feel the same. They're the same mixture of natural and synthetic. I would say compared to other synthetics that I own. So I have a couple of different types of synthetic brushes. Um, this one is Rare Beauty. I don't have a number on it, but this is a synthetic foundation brush and it is very slanted. <laughs> um, this one compared to, let's say, the Jumbo Base. Now this one has been washed. This one has not. Compared to the Rare Beauty, they feel fairly similar. There might be a slight edge with more softness with the Sonia G Jumbo Base. I'd say the sides of the brush feel softer with the Sonia G. This one feels slightly rougher. Um, so this might be a popular one that you guys may already be aware of, um, but there are they are different shapes, so you, you can't really compare the shapes. Um, I would say goat hair is not the softest natural hair. It provides a nice grip though. And then match with this synthetic, I think this is going to be even more grippy. So I have a mineral powder buffing brush from IT Cosmetics. This is number 206. So this isn't quite the same because it's meant for powder. But it might be like a, I don't know, similar sort of shape, not really, to the classic base. And it feels very synthetic, it's very dense. I have washed this, but Sonia G just feels softer. I mean, they're both soft. I don't know. We're, we're splitting hairs here. <laughs> um, I don't really know that the softness of a brush makes a huge difference. It's more of something feels scratchy or rough. That's where the problems are, and then it will like irritate and exfoliate your skin. Um, I think both of these won't do that. They're, they're both soft. So like a comparison of softness, uh, I don't know that that really matters. <laughs> um, but I will note like anytime you're doing a buffing motion with your foundation or powder, you can lift up dry skin. And I've had those issues with using a brush for those types of products. So we'll see how that goes today. So those are the overall details of the Fusion 
series. I will say I wasn't planning to get the whole set, but within five minutes, two of the brushes that I wanted to get were sold out. And so I was like, well, I might as well get the set so I can at least get the ones I want right away. Um, the ones I initially wanted to pick up are these, th these three. These are the ones that I was originally just going to get. And this is the classic base, the mini base, and the soft concealer. I wasn't planning on getting the jumbo, and then I saw a video or two, and I was like, yeah, maybe I should get it. Fast foundation sounds good. So I wasn't going to get the jumbo concealer because I don't feel like I need this just to do concealer on my face. Um, but I ended up getting the set anyway, so we'll see. We'll make it all work. I'm really excited because um, I've been waiting for Sonia D to come out with uh, brushes that work with liquids and creams. Because I don't use it, like using these fluffy natural hair brushes with creams, it just, I don't like it. <laughs> Alright, so for the demonstration, I'm going to try out as many of these brushes as I can. I'm going to be using a full coverage foundation. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I have the shade number 3. I'm going to use a thicker concealer, the Tarte Shape Tape, and I have the shade 20B Light. And then I'm going to use like other liquid complexion products like the new Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow, the Shantikai Radiance Gel Bronzer. I do have a couple liquid, I have a lot of liquid blushes, but I'm going to try to use a dark shade that I found to be a little bit harder to blend out. So I'm going to be using the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Eve. You know, this is my first time using these brushes, so You'll have to look out for me using these brushes in future videos to get like a full idea of how well these perform, especially with different types of foundations, different products. You know, this is a first impressions, just want to make that clear. So I'm going to put on a primer first. I'm going to use the Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. I have the original. I have my skincare and sunscreen on. Now I will say, right from the get-go, I haven't had a luck applying foundations with brushes. I'm going to try a couple different techniques. I'm going to try dipping my brush directly into the product, putting it on. Then I'm going to also try putting the product on my face and then using the brush. Um, it seems like not a big difference, or it shouldn't be a big difference, but I have found differences in application with those techniques. So we're going to try both. Um, I am curious to see if these brushes work just dipping the product in the brush and moving it around <laughs> on my face. I dip my brush into the product and put it on my face. Usually I'm applying a lot more product and it just it doesn't adhere as smoothly to my skin. It just looks streakier and it's just not as flattering, but maybe these will make a difference. I'm going to start with the brush dipping technique using this foundation. Now, I don't need a lot of product with this foundation. It's pretty pigmented, so. Um, and I, I wanna use a couple different brushes for this because we have the jumbo base and the classic base. I want to start out with the jumbo base because I feel like most people are going to want to use this for their foundation, especially trying to apply foundation really quickly. You just want to put it on. So that's what I'm going to start with. With the other technique, I'll use the classic base. So I'm going to dip in, it's always a little bit scary. Here we go. Just going to do a little bit at a time. and buffing motions. I get a little bit scared with a buffing motion, as I said, with exfoliating my skin and just kind of digging up 
my pores and uh, making them stand up almost. This is certainly fast. I mean, that was fairly painless. I am liking this brush so far. That's pretty impressive. And it went fairly quickly. Um, I would say I need a little bit more on my nose, still seeing some redness. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone and just put concealer there later and use one of the other brushes to use put on my nose. It really helped disperse the product evenly. Even like when I would first put it on and I just kind of spread out and then I went back in and buffed. That seemed to work pretty well. So let's go and try the classic base on the other side. Using a slightly different technique, I'm going to use my finger and apply the foundation and then buff it in. This one is supposed to make your pores really flawless. So we're going to see how that goes. Now you can you know, spread out as much or little as you want with this technique, whatever works for you. So now I'm gonna go in and buffing motions again. What I like about this technique is you have more control about how much product you put on your face. When you put the you know, put it on your finger and then put it where you want it. And you can definitely layer more. So you can kind of tell already that this has less coverage than this side, but I do want to go back in and apply a bit more so we can get like an even coverage. This is going fairly smoothly. So I think um, this side, I mean overall you guys aren't going to notice too much between the two sides but I can see a little bit closer. And I think this side kind of attached a little bit better to my skin. And I think that probably mostly has to do with the technique and putting the foundation directly onto the skin rather on than onto the brush first. Um, and I just felt like I had more control. I did put foundation directly on my nose, so this side does look better. Um, but overall, I think both sides look fairly good. If you want like a lot more control over what you're doing, I think the classic base might be for me might be preferred but if you're into like a really fast application that still looks really good the jumbo base is going to be your friend um, and, and if you like the technique of just dipping your brush in it seemed to work pretty well it's not like as perfected as I want it to be but I'm glad I have this one to help with that. could definitely do a technique of using this brush first and then using this brush to go back in and fix little areas. And you can tap in some product on top of the areas that you want to help out. So far, I haven't, you know, for, for a while now, I've been exclusively using sponges to apply my foundation. But this, so far, first impressions, these brushes may help convert, convert me to using brushes again to apply these types of products. And honestly, I don't, I think I use less than a pump. I, I did do two pumps here, but honestly, I think I use less than one. And when you have a good brush like this that really disperses the product smoothly, if you can use less of your products. I mean, I think that's always a win. All right, let's do a little bit of concealer. I'm going to do, um, so I said I was going to do the sharp tart shape tape under, you know, but I might use some, a different one for my face. So I'll do the eyes first and then I'll use the Dior Forever Skin Correct on my face. And I have the shade 1CR in the Dior. But we'll start under the eyes. This is going to be a little bit scary for me because 
I normally use a sponge under my eyes, but I'm gonna use the soft concealer brush. This is the more flexible one for my eyes. And I'm just gonna do a little dab there. Now Shape Tape is definitely a concealer I don't use much because it's a little bit dry and thick for me. Ooh, I just got some under my eye. So soft concealer, it says buffing motions. That's how you're supposed to use it. I think I applied too much. You know what, just for funsies, because this is a thicker concealer, I'm gonna try the jumbo concealer on this side just to see what it's like. This one is a little bit big, I think. I liked using the soft one. I, f I think if you're supposed to buff with this, this is easier to buff with because it's smaller. The soft concealer brush for under the eye just because it's easier to blend out that kind of complicated area. It looks pretty well blended out. I think this concealer is okay. I do get kind of little fine lines under here that seem to be a little bit more prominent than they were before. Um, but let's move on to the face concealer, the Jumbo Concealer, and seeing what this does. Now this isn't a stiff concealer formula, it's pretty creamy, liquidy. And let's do the side of the nose, maybe a little bit over here. I think I'm gonna have to experiment which brush works best around my nose which we don't have to do today. <laughs> I think the, the Jumbo worked on my face fairly well. Pretty quickly blended things out. I think this is probably gonna be more for stiffer formulas though, because I feel like I could use the soft one everywhere on my face, to be honest. So I think we're done with <laughs> foundation and concealer. So let's have my eyebrows on now. Let's get into some cream bronzer. This is the Chantecaille Radiance Gel Bronzer. There's only one shade. I'm gonna put this on my palette. This is way too much, but I want you to be able to see the color and the texture. It's just slightly runny. One I wanna use for this mini base. This is flexible and I'm hoping it helps with blending. So I'm just going to use the tip of my finger to apply a couple dots on each side. Kind of a bronzer deal here. Now this is a fairly warm shade, but we want to see how this does with the foundation underneath. I'm going to use a little bit on my forehead really subtle like I didn't put a lot of product but I think it blended out pretty nicely a lot more uniform and nicer looking than me just blending it with my fingers for sure the trickier part or more telling part I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna apply a blush I think this is a good size. I could go smaller, I could go with the concealer, but I could go larger. But I like the control of the mini base. So I'm gonna be using the Glossy Cloud Paint in Eve because I wanna see this deep brownish berry tone because I found that this was a little bit harder to apply. So a couple tops on both sides. I like the cloud paints in theory, but there's this one is so pigmented, like you have to use like one dab and that's it. Side looks a little bit better. Woo! I mean, I think it looks good, but as good as it's gonna be, but I think I put too much product. I think this looks better in general than how I apply it with my fingers. Um, I'm gonna go into the, the classic base, 
but this is what I wanted to see. Like, what can these brushes do when you do make mistakes? I'm liking the abilities of these brushes so far. Let's do a little bit of highlighter. I'm gonna use the new Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow Cosmic Rose. Now this comes with a little sponge applicator. And I think normally I would use my fingers, but let's do the soft concealer. This is not a highlighter you can see super well on camera. I do want to try out using a primer with the Jumbo Concealer. So I'm using the MAC Painterly Paint Pot, Pro Longwear Paint Pot. And this is the stiffer formula I was talking about. You can use the side of the brush like I am. So I already kind of had some concealer on my lids. But I just wanted to see what this does, because I do find I generally use my fingers to apply these kinds of primers, but it's not like the most exact application when I use my hands. I just find that it just warms up the product a lot more. So I think this is going to be way too large to apply any sort of like cream eyeshadow. Um, so I'm going to just try the soft concealer, but instead of like dipping my brush into the cream eyeshadow that I'm thinking about using, I'm going to put it on one of my finger and then blend it out with this. I'm looking at the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Memorize Rose Gold look, uh, cream eyeshadow and then I have the Tom Ford Cream Eyeshadow Cream Color for Eyes in number 3 Sphinx. We'll do both of these. I'll do like the pink rose gold one first. Just using my finger. Get some color on there. And now I'm gonna blend out with the brush. Just the edges. Normally I don't use a brush to blend out because I don't wanna use my natural hair brushes in creams and liquids. But this will be an option. I probably should have got more soft concealer so I can have one for actual concealer and then one some for eyeshadow. Cool. With the Sphinx shade, now this is like a topper. But in case I go outside the lines, I have something to blend it out with. Now these brushes are not really intended for the eye area, but it says liquids and creams, so why not? I mean, I can tell like it's smooth up here rather than like what I normally get with applying a cream, which is uneven borders. Okay, those are my eyes. I think all my cream products are on. Just for funsies, let's look at the jumbo base. Can I use this with powder? Can be used with powders. All right, we're gonna do it. Kogendo. Mafanchi Natural Lighting Powder. This one has a little bit more of a glow to it and it's a little bit deep for me. It doesn't really come in colors <laughs> that I can choose from, so I'm just gonna take this jumbo brush, tap into the powder puff. I don't know how this is supposed to be applied with powder. I usually use like something really loose. But I'm just curious what this might do for my skin, just tapping this on. I got a little bit of mattified look now. I don't think this would be my go-to brush <laughs> for setting powder. I don't think it's quite that versatile. It You can do it, like I just showed you, but it wasn't quite as easy because it's so stiff. So I would use something like this for, you know, really nice and loose for setting powder normally. Um, you can also use the Sonia G Face Pro for setting powder. This is just a nice big fluffy face brush. What I noticed about the application uh, using all these different liquid products is that I got no shedding. 
I have tried using natural brushes to apply you know, foundation, like the Wayne Gloss number 13, and I got it, you know, every time I used it, I got some shedding, and I think it was like the buffing motions with the thicker product, and not a powder for some reason, it just kicked up hairs. I did not have that issue with Sonia G. So that is a good sign. I do not like finding little hairs in my face. <laughs> I'm going to apply a little bit of eyeliner and mascara and some lips and I will be right back to talk about my final thoughts. Alright, this is the final look using also Nuji brushes. I am super happy with the result. I put on some mascara from Essence, the Princess Lash. I used um, the Sicily Nude Lip Liner, the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent Kitten Mischief shade on my lips. I did a little bit of a setting spray, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Setting Spray. And here we are. I am very happy overall with the application of my foundation. I think that really improved the look and smoothness of my of a full coverage foundation on my skin. I think it looks really good. I know in the past foundation always looked pretty terrible on me and so I switched to using damp sponges and that greatly improved things. But these brushes really have changed the game for me and so now I want to use brushes with foundation. I mean I blend into the skin really nicely whereas before like I could see little little I could see in my pores like a foundation and each pore I could see a little deposit of foundation it just never looked good. Um, but this I mean so far I am loving. <laughs> um, first impressions very very positive with these brushes and as you saw through the demo there were some trouble spots with my skin and how things applied like this side of my nose things don't want to stick very well so um, there's some things that I will have to troubleshoot with these brushes and it's going to depend on the day how my skin is the foundation I'm using all of that plays a part of course um, the concealer, I definitely found that the soft concealer was easier to blend out the shape tape. I do think that formula is not super easy to work with in my skin. And then I got some, you know, I feel like it, it highlighted my fine lines, that concealer. So I don't think that it has much to do with the brushes, <laughs> to be honest. But I do think this blended things out pretty nicely and easily. It reminds me of like an eyeshadow brush, but I did like the flexibility and able to get in these small areas fairly well. But I do think like with everything, practice with brushes makes perfect, but overall I enjoy the look that this gave me, especially my complexion. Now with like the cheek products, the bronzer, the highlighter, and the blush, I think everything is nice and smoothed out. I am going to have to play with the liquid blush in figuring out which, how much product to use with these brushes because they do distribute things very well. So I'm probably just going to have to use less of everything. Um, I think the, the bronzer though seemed to work fairly well and the highlighter. I think the highlighter I could have probably blended out with my fingers just fine because it's so subtle. I don't think a brush is necessary, but I think a brush is good to kind of blend all three together and just kind of create an overall smoothness. Probably the classic base or the mini base is going to help kind of marry everything in. Um, especially all the liquid products on your face is just going to help with that. If there's a brush that I really recommend after you're, you know, doing a full look, Honestly, I could see a use for having both um, the Jumbo and Classic base brushes because there are going to be times when you want to just kind of overall do your face quickly and then perhaps go back in for more detail with the smaller one. And there's going to be times where you want to use the smaller one all over your face just to have like a more detailed, perfected look. 
because I feel like this is less likely to perfect those harder to reach areas like around the nose, under the eyes. It just might be a little bit more difficult to blend these areas out with this. Um, but this is much smaller and then even smaller, the mini base definitely can get in there. And this is going to be perfect, the mini, for your other face products. Blushes, liquids, creams, whatever you want to use that requires a little bit more detail. The soft concealer, if you like using a brush for concealer, this is a nice one. I think it did a great job. Do I think you need the jumbo concealer? This is the one brush for me personally I found like it did work well on my face but I think I could use the soft concealer around my face as well. But if you are concealing large areas, so let's like you're doing like a concealer contour kind of deal where you want a light shade under here, you probably want the stiffer larger brush over the soft concealer. Like if you're doing concealing over large areas you might want something like this but I you know at the same time I did feel like this applied my eye primer pretty well so there is a use for it for sure it just depends on what you do in your makeup routine um, but you certainly don't have to pick up the set I mean everything sold out now anyway so you have a while to think about it before it's restocked um, you do want to sign up for alerts through Beautylish to find out when things are getting restocked, uh, for sure. You have to pay attention to what's in your, your budget. If you have a need for one foundation brush over another, while this might not be as fast, it's probably going to be useful for the most people. This is the classic base. If you are, you have pretty good skin, um, you're not into like super perfected complexion, the jumbo base, it's going to give you a nice, um, fast application that's overall going to be nice perfecting enough. Um, so this is the most expensive brush, but probably for the most, most people's everyday uses, this is going to be great for liquid foundation. Um, if you do concealing with a sponge, you probably don't need these two. Um, but you may absolutely find a use for them. I just think you need to think about what you need now and then later on you might realize like hey that kind of brush might be good but you don't you can buy things in increments don't feel like you have to buy everything all at once just think about like what you need in your collection now and what your needs are now uh, I think it's good to build your brush collection slowly these are pricey, but they do make things faster and smoother. Like the nicer quality brushes definitely help your application. Um, but that being said, you can have amazing brushes. You do want to think about technique though when you're using them and what they're designed for. So I, like I told you, these were designed for buffing, so circles. But if you're slapping on your foundation like this, you may not get the best result. So think about how you apply your foundation with these brushes and, you know, are you doing it the way it was intended to be used? Also, you want to think about your skin condition and skin care. While makeup is great to cover up, um, sometimes brushes don't work well if you have a skin condition that is very dry as i said like buffing motion or you have very acne prone skin or you, and you have active breakouts sometimes using a brush and a buffing technique to apply foundation can really overly irritate your skin and bring up dry flakes so you want to think about that um, when picking up a brush using a brush um, First and foremost, you want to take care of your skin and do the best thing for your skin. Um, and you know, I know a lot of, I know it's, it's tempting to like get the best makeup to cover up your face, but what's most important is that your face is healthy and that you're treating your skin conditions and making that a priority than covering up your skin. I know you probably don't want to hear this, but a clear complexion, a smooth complexion, 
is going to is going to make your makeup look a lot smoother and it's going to make it a lot easier to apply so the better your skin looks the better your makeup's going to look i know that sounds terrible but it's it's true you know when you're ha when you're having a good skin day and your skin's mostly clear and you're nice and moisturized you're not overly dry feeling everything just magically kind of fit falls into place you know a lot of what makes m smooth and pretty makeup application is your skin the tools you're using how you use them and the makeup products that you're using so a lot goes into pl into play here so if you end up trying a brush and the first time you try it it's not quite what you expect it to be try changing things up try a different technique try a different makeup product um, you know take a look at your skin before you put anything on it what does it need is it really oily and shiny do you need something a little bit more mattifying do you need some more moisture you got to take all of that into consideration when you're evaluating whether or not a brush is going to work for you. But those are my final first impression thoughts. I hope you find this video helpful. If these brushes do get restocked in the future, hopefully this video finds you well and will help inform your purchases. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.